Hello everyone. Today's video will cover Unit 4, Section 3, and we're going to be looking at some proofs about parallelograms. Now, we're in a unit called Triangle Congruence, so you might be thinking, why are we looking at parallelograms? Well, the reality is parallelograms are made of triangles. So if you were to draw a line straight through, you'd have two triangles. So these proofs about parallelograms are really more proofs about triangles. So we're going to go ahead and start with this first example that says, given a parallelogram, prove its opposite sides are congruent. So I have AB and BC and AB and CD, and I need to show that both sets of sides there are congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my given statements. Um, so one, it says, given a parallelogram. So that's actually our first line. I'm going to go ahead and write that in here. So I have given a parallelogram, or we'll actually just name this ABCD. So we have ABCD is a parallelogram. Because it is given. All right. Next, by the definition of a parallelogram, I know that I have two sets of parallel sides, but it's also marked in there as well. So you could technically say given on that too. So I have for line two, AB is parallel to DC. Oh, that should be DC, not BC, so we're gonna fix that. AB is parallel to DC and BC is parallel to AB. And that is by the definition of a parallelogram. Definition of a parallelogram. And again, that could also be given. Right, so now that I have those two things, I have to do one other thing before I can continue any further with my proof, and that is to draw that line that I was talking about where it goes from A to C. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to, I'm going to write this part in black so that the uh, line shows up nice and clear. So I have um, draw line AC, and you actually write that right in your statement. Draw AC, and that's a segment, so you should put a bar above it to say segment AC, and the reason why is because of a postulate, and we did give them numbers in class, so if you were in my class and recording the dictionary and you say, oh, that was postulate number four or postulate number three, you can say postulate number four, postulate number three, whatever number we gave it here, but because some of us don't have that um, luxury of having those dictionaries and are at home, I'm going to go ahead and just write out what the postulate states in the box. So it's going to get a little small. I'm going to zoom in on that so that we can try to fit that in a little bit better. There's a full sentence that's going to go in here. So we have the reason why we can draw this line is because through any two points, there is exactly one line. All right. So if there are any two points, there's exactly one line. So I can go ahead and draw a line traveling from A to C. I'm going to use my ruler to help me out to make that a little straighter and getting that. There it is. All right. And if you have a straight edge, I recommend using it. Okay. So that could be a little bit better, but it's going to work. So that's all we need. As long as it works, good for us. All right. So now that we have not just one parallelogram, but two triangles because of this draw line AC or line segment AC, now I can prove this like I was doing before for my triangles. So we previously talked about a couple different shortcuts we could take um, where we had side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. And we are going to think about if any of those can help us right now. And right now, I'm not recognizing if any of them will 
So I will come to that later, but I am going to recognize, or I do recognize, that this line is in both of my triangles, and because it's in both triangles, that means that I can say that um, it is congruent to itself. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a marking that says that that line is congruent to something that's this green tick mark there, and I'm going to say that segment AC is congruent to segment AC, it is congruent to itself, and if you remember the property that says that something is congruent to itself is called the reflexive property. So that's the reason, is the reflexive property. All right, next, because we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, I actually have two pairs of alternate interior angles in this parallelogram. So I have angle BCA and angle CAD, and those are alternate interior angles. And I also have angle BA, I think it was a C up there, yep, C, and angle DCA, and those will be alternate interior angles. So I'm going to go ahead and write both of those angles in one line. So I have, oh, oh no, let's put that back. Okay. There we go. And I have that this angle is congruent to angle BAC, and angle CAD is congruent to angle BCA. So I'm going to go ahead and write those two sets of congruent angles in one line. So I have angle BAC is congruent to angle um, DCA, and I have angle DAC is congruent to angle ACB by the um, angle alternate interior angles theorem. And I'm going to go ahead and abbreviate that like I told you I would, alternate interior angles theorem. And again, that's not an official abbreviation. I just do this as shorthand when taking notes, but you do need to be able to write out the whole thing. So you need to know that this is alternate interior angles, and if this is not going to work for you, you need to write out all the words. All right, so now I have that I have angle, side, angle. Is that one of our shortcuts? Yes, it is. So because we have that shortcut, I can then say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCA. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down in my next step. I have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CAD by the side, or sorry, angle, side, angle, congruence postulate. And at this point, we just need to write the three letters. All right, so now you might be thinking, okay, it says prove that its opposite sides are congruent, and we ended with the triangles there. Well, that's because we're not done, but now that we have shown that we have two congruent triangles, we can use that other shortcut that we learned in our last lesson, the CPCTC, to say that everything else about those two triangles are congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and write that last line in, and I actually am going to um, extend my chart here. I do need one more row, and I apologize about that. I did know we needed another one, and I forgot to put it on. So we're drawing it in, but that's all right. Sometimes you have to do that. All right, so because we have two sets of congruent triangles, I can say that those pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and say that AB is congruent, congruent to BC. It's congruent. AB is congruent to BC. And I have that AB is congruent to DC. And both of those things we can prove because of the CPCTC, which says corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So now, because of the triangles that make up a parallelogram, we were able to say that the opposite sides of this parallelogram are congruent. All right. We're going to go ahead and look at example number two, where we are going to prove another piece of parallelograms. So in example two, it says, given a parallelogram, prove that its opposite 
angles are congruent. So last time we were proving opposite sides are congruent. This time we're proving that opposite angles are congruent. So just like before, we're going to need a triangle in there. So we are going to start with our um, given statement, and then we will put in a new um, line from A to C. The only thing that we need to put in there is the given a parallelogram piece, so we're going to go ahead and start with that. So I have A, B, C, D is a parallelogram because it is given. Because this is a parallelogram, like the last one, you might be thinking that you need to include that we have parallel sides, but those parallel sides aren't going to help us prove that opposite angles are congruent. So I'm just going to leave that line out of this and we're going to go straight to our part that says to draw line AC. So line two is draw segment AC and I'm going to get my ruler back out here and draw, try to draw a little bit better of a line this time. And that looks like it might work out a little better. It did. All right, I'm going to put my ruler away. And let's go ahead and move on to our next line. Um, oh, except I forgot the part, the reason why we can do that. Again, same thing from before. Through any two points, there's exactly one line. So that's what we're going to write in there. And I'll zoom in again. So we have through any two points, there is exactly one line. All right. So now we have two triangles instead of one parallelogram that we're going to work with. So just like before, we had this line right here that we said was congruent to itself. We have to write that in again. So let's go ahead and switch. So I have AC is congruent to AC by, again, the reflexive property, which says that something is congruent to itself. We're going to be using this one a fair amount in this unit. And now we need to look at what else we can show to say that we have opposite congruent angles. And in this case, what's actually happening here, and this we couldn't use last time because we were trying to prove that the um, opposite sides were congruent, but because we know that this is a parallelogram and we're not trying to prove it anymore, then there's a nice shortcut that we get to take here. And that shortcut is that our opposite sides are congruent because of the definition of a parallelogram. So I'm going to go ahead and write in that I have, and I'm going to put this in one line, AB is congruent to DC and BC is congruent to AD by the definition of a parallelogram. All right. So now, because I'm saying that those sides are congruent, I'm going to go ahead and mark those in. So I have the two ends are congruent to each other, and the other two sides are congruent to each other. So now I have three sets of congruent sides, which is another one of our triangle congruence shortcuts. It's the side, side, side congruence shortcut. So we're going to go ahead and write in that I have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CBA ABC is congruent to triangle CAD by the side 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 congruence postulate. All right. So now that I have two sets of congruent triangles, now I can say that any part of those triangles are also congruent. So we're going to go ahead and start with um, the opposite sides, and this is a little bit of a shortcut that I'm allowing you to take. Um, we're going to jump to saying that angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle B is congruent to angle D. Um, and we don't need to get into the details of adding these together, but technically that's what the rows we're skipping are. So you would need to say 
that angle CAD is congruent to angle BCA and angle BAC is congruent to angle DCA and these two things add up to angle A and these two add up to angle C and because they're congruent those are also congruent uh, but B and D we know from the uh, well triangles are congruent so the sides the angles must be congruent too so we're skipping that part I'm just letting you know that this could be a little longer we're not going to go into those details again we're just going to go ahead and write in our proof that we have angle A is congruent to angle C and angle B is congruent to angle D by the again C P C T C because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent so that's what's written right there and I'm noticing that that color is not showing up very well I'm going to go ahead and leave it this time but I won't use it in the next one all right so that being said we have one more proof that we need to take a look at um, and this proof is asking us to prove that it's the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So this proof has a little bit more that we need to get into, but it starts very much the same way. It goes right in the first line with the given statement. So I have ABCD is a parallelogram. because it is given. Okay, so last time in example two, we did not say that the pieces were parallel to each other, but this time that is definitely something that we need to say. So I'm gonna go ahead and write in here that I have AB is parallel to DC and BC is parallel to AD. And the other thing that we need to know is that those opposite sides are congruent. So I'm gonna go ahead and write all of that in one line and that's going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze but it should uh, be able to fit in there so I'm going to zoom in here a second so I have from the image AB is parallel to uh, DC and BC is parallel to AD and AB is congruent to DC and we have that um, BC is congruent to AD and all of that is by the definition of a parallelogram. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that those pieces of information are all in my picture so that I can check off what we're type or writing as we go and I know that the parallel markings of those arrows mean that this is parallel but I do need to show that these have um, congruence so I'm adding my tick marks on my sides all right so now that I have that we have this parallelogram we've just we've defined the parallelogram we've identified some congruent pieces and parallel pieces now I need to draw the diagonals that bisect each other. Um, and we're going to prove that they bisect each other, but first we need to draw them. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the, uh, we're going to actually use two different colors here so that we can identify these a little bit better. I'm going to start with purple here, and I'm going to say that we're going to draw a C. And we will define why we're able to do that in a second we're going to start with actually drawing the line. So I'm going to pull my ruler back out and it looks like it held its angle for me, which is nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a C there. And now I'm going to switch colors here a second and we're going to draw um, hopefully this orange, well we'll use this, um, it's really a gold color, but I'm not sure exactly what color it's gonna show up on your screen. So we have purple and gold that are going across our parallelogram. And those are not perfectly straight across, but it will get the point. So we're going to say that those are our diagonals. And you can see right in the picture where they bisect each other. So you might be thinking that, well, obviously they intersect 
the bisecting part is the part that's not necessarily a given. So I have um, AC that I drew, and I'll draw in that we drew BD as well, but first I want to get my reasoning in there, and the reason why we're able to do that is because, once again, through any two points, there is exactly one line. All right, so we had in this image, we drew not just AB, but also BD. So draw AC, draw BD. All right, so now that we have those things drawn in there, we need to um, point out this intersection point. So I'm going to draw a dot right on top of that. I'm using black so that it hopefully shows up nicely. And we're going to name that point. Um, we have A, B, C, D already used, so I'm going to go ahead and just use the letter E. All right. And I'm going to draw in here, or write in here, that we were labeling point E. So our next line should say, label point E. Label point E. And the reason why we can do that is by the definition of an intersection. So this is definition of an intersection, which is something that we defined in, well, actually, I think it was section one of unit one. So that might have been the very first thing that we did all year. If it wasn't section one, it was section two. All right, so now that we have everything identified and we know what's already there, we're going to go ahead and use the lines that we just created to point out a few other pieces of information. So we're going to go ahead and start with our alternate interior angles. So we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, and there's several pairs of these this time. So I have this angle and this angle and these angles. Another set is right here, and there's another set right there. So there's actually um, four sets of alternate interior angles, and we need to write them all in our proof. So this is, again, going to get a little tight, but we'll make it fit. I'm putting it all in one box. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put two different colors on this so that you can hopefully see the difference between them in the image, but it's going to get a little crowded in our picture. So I'm going to start with the alternate interior angles that are on the transversal that goes from point A to point C. And you can look at this in the image after we write this in here, uh, but I'd like you to be able to see what we're writing here. So we're zoomed in a little far. So I have angle BAC is congruent to angle DCA. And I have in that same line and I'm actually going to write it right below it. I have that angle BCA is congruent to angle DAC. And there is a difference between those numbers. So I've got those in here, and I'm going to go pinpoint those. So I have BAC is congruent to DCA, and BCA is congruent to CAD. All right, so now I have those in there. I'm going to draw another set of those and these time or this time we're going to go on our segment BD. So I'm going to zoom in here again and I have that angle ABD is congruent to angle BDC and I have that angle BDA is congruent to angle DBC. Now we're going to go ahead and put those in here. So I have uh, from DABD, one, two, three, to BDC, one, two, three. And then I have CBD, which is one, two, three, four, to BDA, and again, one, two, three, four. All right, so now I have some congruent angles in there. I have congruent sides in there, and 
All of this is going to help us get to one point, and I'm looking at this, and we're going to need another uh, box or two again. But that's all right. We'll draw it in. We'll draw that in in a second. First, we want to make sure that we write down that this is the alternate interior angles theorem that allows us to say that. Alternate interior angles theorem. So now that I have pointed out that I have these angles that are congruent by the alternate interior angles theorem, I can show that I have several sets of congruent triangles here. And I know that because I have angle, side, angle, and angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So I actually have four sets of congruent triangles in here, but it gets a little bit more than that because these triangles actually, um, we have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle for those triangles too. So there's lots of triangles going on here. We have these two big ones. We have these four small ones. The triangles that we need to work with are triangles A, E, D, and B, E, C, and triangle B, E, A, and triangle C, E, D. So we're going to go ahead and write those in here. So I have triangle A, E, D is congruent to triangle, um, it was B, E, C. And triangle A, E, B is congruent to triangle C, E, D. And both of those things, well, and the others that are in there, are all by the angle side angle congruence postulate. All right, so now that we have said that we have two sets of congruent triangles by angle side angle, now I can say that their pieces are congruent. So that's going to help us out again with that CPCTC. I'm going to go ahead and draw in the next line, and I just told you we're going to be using the CPCTC corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. The parts that we need to identify right now are the lines that go from one end point to the center intersection point. So I have AE is congruent to EC, and that is by the C, P, C, T, C, because those are pieces of our triangles. So I have A, E is congruent to um, E, C. And I have uh, B, E is congruent to E, D. And now that I've pointed those things out, I'm going to draw them in my picture. So I have, um, I've already used one and two tick marks, so I need three tick marks on one of these, three tick marks on the other, and then four tick marks here, and four tick marks there. There's a lot going on in this picture. And all of those pieces of information are all in our proof. So now that I have that these sides are split and they are equal, then I can say that E bisects A, C, and B, D by the definition of a segment bisector. And that's going to be my last line of this proof. So I have right in, this is our eighth line, E bisects A, C, and B, D by, once again, the definition of a segment bisector. All right, so all three of those are, again, proofs about parallelograms, but they're really about the triangles that make up the parallelogram. All three of these proofs are gonna be the only types of proofs that you see in this uh, section. Um, and we're going to make sure that we practice them several times so that you can get the hang of what's going on within the proof. We'll pick back up with section four covering some uh, proofs in the coordinate plane and some other theorems that we already know.